In this case, I'm going to be working through how to plan just a simple implant case for replacing two upper right premolars. Uh, at this point, the only thing that's been done is that Blue Sky Plan has been launched and we have opened the patient's raw DICOM files, which is done by just going to File, New Project, and starting from the patient's CT. Hopefully you've saved the raw DICOM data on your desktop or wherever on your computer, and then you simply open that. So I generally take the same systematic approach with all cases that I do uh, that are dentate, and that generally consists of opening the CT, limiting the field of view, um, then adding the STL, then adding teeth, then implants, then designing the guide. So that's pretty much how I uh, approach all cases. So the first thing I'm going to need to do here is to open the STL. So we're going to go to File, Import STL, find the folder where you have the STL stored, and just click OK. And this is one of the new features that Blue Sky Plan has added recently, which is an auto stitch function. And this is really, uh, it's made the learning curve on guided surgery much, much easier in planning these cases for yourself. Because one of the most difficult things historically was trying to make sure that you got a really accurate stitch on this. Uh, with this new function, all you have to do is click which jaw you're working on, in, case, in this case maxilla, and then hit align. And as you can see, the software does an excellent alignment just with one click, so very easy. I'm gonna click OK to confirm this and continue. And let's go now and verify the accuracy of our stitch. So I like to do that in this axial window. And as I scroll up and down through this, you can see that green model outline is very tightly adapted to these teeth. That's indicative of a really good stitch. And so I like the way that looks. Uh, you could also go and enlarge your cross-sectional screen. And once again, I see that tight adaptation between the model outline and the actual CT. So we've got a great stitch. And at this point, I like to turn the CT off because it only clear, or, uh, clouds my view up. So I do that by going to Panels, Surfaces Panel, and then just unchecking Visible on your CT surface. Okay, this is a much cleaner surface to look at. Now the next step would be to go ahead and add the prosthetic treat, uh, teeth that we're going to be placing. And so what I'll do is go up here to the plus tooth button and we can choose what library of teeth that we want to use. I can control select and add both of them at the same time if wanted. So click OK and then that can be just dropped in. Now let's enlarge this 3D window because this is where I do all the positioning. What I'll do first is just get these teeth positioned in the right place on the ridge. So when you're moving teeth around, if you simply grab on the red of the tooth, you'll be able to bodily move this. And then if you grab any of the widgets, you'll be able to turn the, the tooth in whatever direction that widget is uh, oriented. So when I'm doing this, I'm looking to align my uh, functional cusps and get a nice arch form. This is not a true CAD CAM proposal, uh, but this is more than adequate for the vast majority of, of routine cases. If you need to stretch the tooth, there's a little node sticking out to the lateral. You can grab that and stretch it out. You could do the same thing vertically if necessary, although here we don't really need to do that. In fact, I may even make these a little shorter and pull them up more occlusally. That kind of makes the, the tooth be a little more flattened out, and not have such deep occlusion. I can tell from this uh, direction that both teeth need to be twisted up this direction slightly. So I grab the, uh, the widget oriented in that direction and just bring those teeth up. I can see vertically that I need to bring these teeth down. Oops, should hit that button. So you can always hit the back arrow if needed. Okay, so this tooth position looks good. Let's go ahead and right click and lock these teeth because once you've done this and had them in position, you don't want to have to worry about 
knocking them out of position again. So these are our proposed teeth positions. This is close enough for us to be able to plan the implants. And at this point, we are now ready to go ahead and plan the implants. So come up and hit plus implant. In this case, they're gonna be Biomax implants that are gonna be placed. So this is where you choose your implant system. You can choose the size. Uh, generally, for a posterior tooth, a 4.3 by 10 is a really good starting point. Choose your uh, jaw orientation. One extra thing I like to do is to add a custom abutment, and the only purpose for this abutment is just so that I can see um, more or less where a screw access hole would be. So I make this about 20 millimeters long, 3 millimeters in diameter, and now I'm ready to add this in. So you can drop this into any window that you choose. I usually do that in the panoramic window, and that enables me to at least get this uh, tooth positioned right, or I'm sorry, the implant positioned right under the tooth. And then you could come up and look at it in the cross-sectional window and twist it in whatever direction is necessary there. So this is a really nice wide ridge. I think this will be a great size implant for this case. All right. You can see where the prosthetic emergence is, and perhaps we could scoot that just a little bit more distal, right there, looks really nice. And as you can see in the tangential window, and this tangential window is really important. This is my favorite window for doing implant planning because by spinning the scroll ball, you're able to rotate this implant on its axis and see it from all dimensions. So I can see it from the mesial distal view and just with a quick twist, I can look at it from a buccal lingual view. And everything is lining up nicely. This looks good. Could perhaps upright this just slightly and make sure that emerges right through the middle of that central groove. And that's good. Now, once you've done that, in the case of having two implants like this, one way that you can quickly add the, the implant into the case, another implant, and to make it perfectly parallel, is just to right click on this tooth and then say duplicate. Now, when you do that, you don't see that the implant is there, but if you look closely, you notice that there's a different outline. It's just superimposed sitting right on top. So just move over and grab it and pull it over under your next tooth. Now doing that ensures that both of these implants are perfectly parallel. As long as I'm just bodily moving it and I'm not grabbing that rotation ring, then I know it's going to be perfectly parallel to the other implant. So remember that when you're planting implants, you want to make sure that there's three implants, but sorry, three millimeters between each implant and uh, one and a half millimeters from implant to tooth. Now, it's one thing to put the implant there, and it looks like a great prosthetic position, but can we actually put it there? And when I go back up here again to my tangential window, I see that positioning this implant in that spot is going to actually put me perfed out the buckle. So that's not going to work, uh, but it at least gives me a good starting point, and I can only deviate as much as is necessary. So in this case, I'll just do a slight buckle rotation with that, and then pull it farther over to the lingual. Now, I've not changed anything in this dimension, although I do think I'll bring this a little bit more uprighted. And I wanna really scroll through and make sure I'm respecting that one and a half millimeters right there. And I, I eyeball that just because I've done this a lot, but if you needed to, you could measure that. And it looks like I've got about 1.5, which is exactly what I need. So I'll just remove that. If you wanted to measure between the implants, you could do that as well. 3.19, so we're all good on positioning uh, of our implants. I'll remove that. So these look like they are good size implants for the um, edentulist site. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and begin the process of fabricating the guide. So let's lock the implants. That is done in panels, implant list, and let's lock both of these. 
Let's also decide which surgical kit we're going to use. In this case, we're going to be using the fully guided keyless kit, which is kind of my favorite uh, fully guided system. It's really versatile, uh, super easy to use. All the drills go through the same hole. Uh, you've got the versatility to be able to change things on the fly because of that. So I really like this fully guided keyless kit. So I'll choose that in the drill kit drop down menu. And at this point, I don't need the teeth turned on. So if you come up here, and hit this button where it shows the tooth, not the one with the plus sign, but just the, the plain tooth, that will turn the visibility of those on and off, okay? They're still there, but you can turn their visibility off. And finally, the other thing that we must do before we actually make a surgical guide is that we've got to turn on the guide tubes, okay? So here is the surgical guide tubes. It's under your implant list panel, and you've got to make sure both of these are checked on in order to actually uh, show the guide tubes. Now I'm going to do one other modification. When we do this uh, and let the software plan it by default, the software is always going to um, opt to use a metal guide sleeve. If you have a printer in-house, um, there's really no reason that you have to use a metal guide sleeve in this because the fully guided keyless kit, the built-in keys on the drills that it's going to engage are smooth walled. They're not going to do any cutting. So you can resize this to make it exactly the same uh, diameter as your, uh, your uh, built-in key. And so in this case, the, the built-in key measures 4.95 in diameter. It shows 5.34 right now on my guide tube uh, hole. And that's because, again, it's going to insert a metal guide sleeve. But I can change that. Usually I like to make the hole about 0.1 to 0.15 larger than whatever it is I'm inserting. So if it's 4.95, I'm going to bump this up to 5.10. And then the offset needs to be changed as well if you're going to go tubeless. The kit is designed to use a 8.5 millimeter offset and the software defaults to 8 because there's half a millimeter of lip height on that uh, guide sleeve. If we're not going to use the guide sleeve though, we can bump this up to 8.5. Now the software is going to warn you you're deviating from the defaults and we understand that that's uh, that's okay as long as you know what you're doing here. So guide tubes are now turned on and we're ready to make the surgical guide. And I am I do always visualize here if there's any significant amount of impingement um, that's going to be a problem then I might opt to bump this up but in this case the slight amount of impingement being seen right here is not going to be enough to really alter the accuracy of this guide. So we'll go ahead with uh, where this is now. To make the surgical guide, I'm going to go to Panels, Guide Fabrication. Choose the model that you want to build your guide on. This is the only model we have in this case. We want to lock the implants. We want to use the automatic brush, normal quality, choose your jaw orientation, and then hit Draw Curve. Now, to draw the uh, outline of where the guide is, you're going to need to have this button highlighted red to draw a curve. And then when you're ready to start drawing, push your shift button. And you see it turns that into a crosshair. And now left click and hold it down as you're clicking. So I'm holding down shift and I'm holding down my left mouse button. And I'm going to draw this guide perimeter right along the gingival margins of these teeth. I usually go over to about the contralateral canine premolar area. Now, something to notice is that eventually I run out of model with how I've got the uh, model oriented. Like, let's say if I'm right here, I can continue my line on, and then I need to let go of shift and the button so that I can reorient the model. Okay, so reorient. And it's important that you not come in and try to start your line back right where you were because you can make the line cross over itself. It's perfectly acceptable to come over here just in the general vicinity with a little gap and continue your line on. So once again, hit shift and hold down your left mouse button, reorient, and we just go around the arch until we get back to the same general vicinity as where we started. Once you've done that, you can hit edit curve and when you hit edit curve, it's going to bring up these nodes, which you can now fine tune the positioning of your guide. And again, I try to keep this right at approximately the gingival margin.
and the software does default to block out the undercuts and so you don't have to worry about um, you know trying to stay above the height of contour or anything like that. And that looks great. In particular, I always make sure that I don't have these uh, at the sites of the implants extended way down the buckle because the farther down that goes, the more you're going to have to extend your flap to accommodate that guide. So we've got the curve drawn. Now we're ready to create the surgical guide. So just push the button that says create surgical guide. And now, as you see, the guide has been fabricated. The guide tubes are in position exactly where we had those guide tubes turned on. And something to notice is that the software knows it can't impinge into the, uh, the actual model. So if I was to turn off the guide sleeves right now, you see that my resulting guide here does not impinge into the model. Okay, it eats away those tubes anywhere there's impingement. And that's going to enable us to not have to worry about this thing not seating. Uh, because suppose you were going to do this as a flapless case, there's no way that you would get that guide seated because these tubes would be impinging, okay? But again, the software knows it can't do that. We don't have to worry about this impingement. As long as the inner diameter of this uh, gold tube doesn't impinge with anything, then it's no problem. We can work with that. Now, the last thing that you might opt to do is to put in some windows because it's very important that you be able to tell that this guide is fully seated. And in order to do that, we can now go and just right click on the guide and say add window. A little box is going to come up and you can move this shape around, alter it to whatever position where you want to create a window. One thing that can be helpful is in your surfaces panel to choose your surgical guide and turn up the transparency on it where you can see those teeth underneath it. And by doing that, we can see just enough of the cusp tips to expose those, but no more so that we don't you know, weaken our guide significantly. All right, the widget works just the same way as it does with the tooth. You grab the ring and whatever uh, direction you want to orient it. If you want to add another one, just right click again, add window, and we can add another. Okay, the guide looks like it's all good now. And in order to integrate these windows into the surgical guide, what we need to do is go back to your guide panel and just push the button again that says create surgical guide. And now you see the software actually creates a second surgical guide, but this time it's labeled the guide with windows. And you can see that when you seat this in the patient's mouth, you'll be able to look and see that those teeth are fully seated into this guide and actually be able to verify that this is in fact seated. The last thing that you might want to do is in the guide panel, um, let's hope that you've got lots and lots of cases going at any given time and you've got to keep track of whose guide is whose. And so we're going to put the patient's initials on this. And the way this text tool works is that you, your text stays stationary. You actually position the model you're going to place the text on um, behind the text in whatever size orientation you want. And once you like the positioning of that, just choose whether you want to emboss it or engrave it. In this case, I'm going to emboss it and hit apply text. If you wanted to, you could also come in and write your implant sizes. So, so that's certainly not anything that you have to do, but it is kind of nice, especially in a case where you're doing lots of implants, to be able to look at the guide visually and just know, oh, that's what size implant I'm going to be placing here. So... In order to finish this case up, all we need to do now is export the surgical guide. Again, Blue Sky Plan uh, is actually free, but the only time you incur a charge is when you export a surgical guide. So if I wanted to export this to be able to 3D print it, I would go to File, Export Data. I would need to choose the file that I want to export. And you only get charged a maximum of one per case. So let's say I went and changed something and I needed to re-export it. I'm not going to get charged again. Okay, so... I want to export the guide with windows. Everything else that is in this case, you potentially could export, but I definitely don't want to do that. I don't want to export the teeth. I don't want to do the implants or the abutments or the guide tubes. 
All I want to export is this yellow guide. And as you can see, it'll track how many export you, you have remaining. Uh, you can purchase those from Blue Sky um, right within the software, again, in the file menu. And once I export this, it will deduct a cost of one export. Okay, so let's do that and save the file. So that has now been exported and uh, all we have to do to finish the case is to now 3D print it. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll show you. This is the Rayware software that, uh, that the Moonray printer I'm currently using uses. It's a very simple process to be able to print. Just come up here and hit the plus button and go and find your STL that you want to print and hit open. And it's going to pull that into this case. We can orient this. Uh, there's the same kind of widget as we saw in Blue Sky Plan, so you can orient this however you want. Uh, if you're trying to print this very fast, then laid like this where it's a low profile is going to print the fastest. And you would simply come over and pick the resin that you want to use. Surgical guide in this case, I would print at 100 microns. And you can see this is only going to take 32 minutes to print. So it's a very efficient process. I'm not hooked up to the printer right now, so I'm not going to do that. Um, the last step that you might opt to do is create a drill report. And so if, if during the case there was any particular thing that you wanted to note about, you know, where the implants were or anything like that, every one of these windows has a button, like right here, that if I hit it says save a screenshot. And that's going to get added to all the screenshots. So I could select as many of those as I want if there were particular things that I needed to remember. And I can once I've done that, I can come back now and hit drill report. The drill report is going to automatically generate several pictures from all the different implant positions. And then we can create a PDF of that. If you had notes. You can put them in right here, and you can choose for these to be all on one page or uh, best fit, whatever um, you choose to do. And then click OK, and as you can see, it's going to generate this PDF, which I can then save. And I, I really like this because now it serves as my plan of attack. First of all, it can be scanned into the patient's chart, so if in the future you need to look at something about this case, you don't have to necessarily open it. Uh, and launch the whole program, you can just look back at your screenshots and that tells you all the pertinent information. So I'm going to save this and that will get printed out uh, to be used on the day of surgery. And that pretty much concludes this. So all that needs to be done now is to print the guide and then the surgery uh, would go very smoothly and this probably would take a total of 15 to 20 minutes to place these implants and they should end up perfectly parallel right in the exact position where you wanted them.